I'm Jim Hummel. This week I had a chance to sit down with Jed Thorpe. He's the Rhode Island Director of Clean Water Action. They and a coalition of other environmental groups are pushing for a bottle bill. Here's our entire interview. Bottle bills have met with varied levels of success. None have passed since I've been here. What makes you optimistic this year? Yeah, good question. Um, so I think we're at a point now where legislators recognize that the plastic pollution problem, beverage container pollution only continues to get worse. We have data from the past you know, 30, 40 years from shoreline cleanups and volunteer cleanups that show pretty clearly that what we've been doing isn't working. We gotta, we gotta do better, we gotta do things differently. So it's really environmentally driven. Oh, absolutely. So we have a big coalition of environmental organizations, our organization, Save the Bay, Audubon, really every environmental organization in the state, local watershed groups, and we're all united to try to make this the year that we finally get a recycling refund system, also known as a bottle bill, done here in Rhode Island. Now, you know, it's been tried in the past. Um, it hasn't been successful, but there have been many um, other countries around the world that have been adopting these systems uh, in recent years because bottom line, they work, and that's why we're supporting it as well. I read your literature, 10 states and 10 countries. 10 states is really not a lot. I thought that there would have been more in the year 2023. Yeah, it's not a lot, but 10 is enough to give you a pretty good sample size to, to see how these systems work. And the data from those 10 states, again, over the past 30, 40 years, is pretty clear that these systems do two things. Number one, they reduce the amount of litter going into the environment, the, the amount of plastic pollution going into our waterways. And number two, they improve recycling. Because when you capture containers, uh, like you do in a beverage container recycling system, uh, they're much more likely to actually be turned into new bottles. As opposed to right now, um, you know, things that you put in the single stream system, a lot of those containers aren't actually recycled. Um, and so we gotta do better on recycling as well. And again, a bottle bill addresses both of those problems. So it's a system that's very simple, but it, it's also complex. It is not complex. There are yeah. nuances to it. You think you put your, your, uh, your deposit down, but there's also who's going to handle it, who's going to pay for what, you know, who's going to handle the money and all of that. Did you try to simplify it this year or is it, can you only get so simple on this program? Yeah, well, there's a little bit of you can only get so simple because you, there are a lot of parties that are affected um, that, and that are part of the process. So you have the bottling companies, you have the retailers, you have the consumers, you have Rhode Island Resource Recovery. Um, there's a lot of different parties that have a hand in that whole system. So you can only simplify it so much. But what we tried to do this year is look at all those different states and countries that already have bottle bills and pull out the best features from all those different systems and come up with what we hope will be the best system in the country. And what do you like? From what, what does that look like when you pull out the best? Yeah, I think the things that are really important are having a 10 cent deposit fee versus say a five cent deposit. The data is pretty clear that the states like Michigan and Oregon that have the 10 cent fee have much higher uh, redemption rates. Um, number two, you have to include pretty much all the beverages have to be included in the system. So the Massachusetts bill, for example, the, you know, they're still operating under the law that was passed back in the late 70s where you know, we didn't have bottled water like we do today. We didn't have um, energy drinks and some of these other beverages that are, that are out there. So it's really important that you know, we include all the beverages. The other thing that's really important is making returning the containers really easy for a consumer. So instead of just having you know, a couple of redemption centers here and there, that we make it easy so that people can return it to retail. You know, they're going back to that store to buy more beverages. They should be able to just, just you know, return their empty containers there as well. You're looking for economy of scale, though, because you exempt some of the, the, the smaller mom and pops, right? Right. I think you know, we recognize, again, you know, trying to appease all these different interests here, we recognize that some of the smaller mom and pop stores, they just don't have the space. You know, a lot of those folks are space constrained. They might not have the space to store the empty containers. Um, so that's why you know, we exempted um, places that are under 2,000 square feet in the bill. 10 cents across the board for everything? Yeah, 10 including cents. Including nips? Including the nips. So the nips would be included in this bill, which we think is really important. Um, but nips have been a big deal the last couple of years. There's been a lot of attention paid to them. Because they're so small, they're especially problematic and persistent out there in the environment. And um, you know, volunteer groups around the state have been collecting tens of thousands of these nip, these little, you know, little alcohol beverage containers. Um, they're problematic because they're small enough that they can slip down into the storm drains, 
which then create a maintenance problem for municipal staff who have to go in there and clean these things out. And they also, they can't be effectively recycled out in Johnston at the, at the materials resource facility. Um, so that's another reason that they're particularly problematic. Well, how is the recycling market now? In ter- is that valuable stuff? You know, I know the crushed glass, you talked about that that's, yeah. that's being used more for construction, but when all of that goes out there, are they able to sell a good chunk? So they do have markets for the plastic, for the aluminum, you know, for the cardboard. They are able to sell all of that. But most of the plastic that goes through what we call the MRF, the Materials Resource Facility, most of that plastic doesn't actually get turned into new beverage containers. It's what we call downcycled. So it's turned into carpet, uh, fleece clothing, uh, automotive parts. Um, and I think, you know, what people want when they think of recycling is, you know, my old bottle becomes a new bottle. My old can becomes a new can. Right now that doesn't happen because the single stream system out at the landfill is kind of a dirty, you know, mechanical process. The plastic gets uh, contaminated with bits of cardboard and glass and metal. And then that plastic, while they have a market for it, it can't be turned back into what we call food grade plastic. And that's where, um, the deposit return systems are so important because all of the recycled uh, um, plastic in the country, any bottle that you see that is made from uh, you know, recycled plastic, all that plastic comes from bottle bill states because it's the only way that you can get food grade plastic is through a deposit return system. And you're saying in the non-states, they use what you call virgin plastic, right? It's the, exactly. It's the, it's the newer stuff because in effect, that's cheaper for them to use. Right, and that's what- for the environment, but it's cheaper for them. It's cheaper for them, and that's what we want to get away from because, um, you know, in addition to the environmental impacts, you know, plastic getting into our water bodies, you know, that's those are fossil fuel-based products, right? We have to extract resources to make that plastic, refining, transportation, production, there's environmental impacts all along the way when you're talking about plastic. So, you know, we want to reduce that need for that new virgin material. Let's go back to the recycling part. I still, for the most part, put my cans in one bin and my paper in the other. Okay. Are people going to be rifling? I put mine out on Thursday night for Friday pickup. Those are going to be worth 10 cents each. Am I going to have people going through my neighborhood picking cans out because they can redeem them at the store? Yeah, you may, you may. And I think that that's okay. Um, I think each individual city and town will have to figure out, you know, how they want to deal with that, if they want to somehow, you know, find ways to restrict that. But in a lot of the states that have bottle bills, um, that's a great way for that material to get captured um, and get back into the system in a real recyclable way. So for the town, whether it's going to some person who's going to redeem it or it's going to the recycling center, either way, from an economic standpoint, it's probably hold harmless for the town. Yeah, well, it's you know, not going to the landfill. Yeah, well, it can actually save the town money. So, for example, you know, the heaviest recyclable items are glass, obviously. And if that glass gets pulled out of the single stream system, even just a percentage of that glass gets pulled out and goes into the deposit return system, that's less weight, uh, less volume that the state has to, or I'm sorry, that the municipalities have to transport out to Johnston, and that can save those um, uh, cities and towns money. What, what is the cost of the beverage industry and what are the expectations? Yep. So real quick, the way the whole system works is um, the distributors deliver the beverages to the retailer. The retailer pays the distributor 10 cents. Retailer sells that beverage to a consumer. Consumer pays the retailer 10 cents, so the retailer is made whole. Now on the return side, consumer returns the bottle to the retailer. They get their 10 cents back. And when the retailer returns those empty containers, to the bottle or distributor, they get their 10 cents back and they also get paid a three and a half cent per container handling fee for their work and their effort making space at the store to you know collect those containers. By the beverage industry. By the beverage industry. So that's the rub. That, yeah. They don't want to have to pay that. Well, ultimately it's a producer responsibility system, right? It's a, it's a system that makes the people who are profiting from, from these uh, items, it makes them ultimately responsible for making the whole system work. Now, historically, the Beverage Association has, you know, strongly opposed bottle bills. In recent years, they've kind of softened their, their, their stance on this, and they've said that they don't necessarily oppose bottle bills. They want to see them constructed and crafted in a particular way, you know, usually a way that, you know, benefits their industry, but they are open to um, deposit return systems. And in fact, you've seen them um, support some of the legislation in other states like Oregon, uh, the revised uh, bottle bill system out in, um, I'm sorry, Oregon and Illinois, 
Um, so they are starting to soften their position a little bit. And I think they can come around here in Rhode Island too. So I'll be honest with you. I buy uh, one liter bottles at the Walmart and Seekonk right. of flavored water. They're tacking on five cents. I I've never returned a bottle. I just, it goes into the recycling. It's kind of the cost of doing business. Am I going to take 10 bottles back for 50, 50 cents? I don't throw them out on the, on the ground. They're getting recycled. Right. But your concern is the trash and the reusability. Is your thought for the people, there's always education involved. Sure, of course. So, you know what, I've been doing this. I'm not really going to worry about the 10 cent deposit. I don't care about that. But if it's along the roadway, is your thought that that's going to be valuable to somebody who's going to want to pick it up and redeem it? Absolutely. So even if you don't take it back to the redemption center, if that ends up in the environment, there's now an incentive because there's a value on that container. If not you, somebody else is going to go out there and pick that up because it has that value on it. That's where the deposit is so important. So that's the incentive, you think? Exactly, yeah. And that's, and that's why having, say, a 10 cent deposit is so much more important than, say, a 5 cent deposit. And again, we've seen that in states. Connecticut is actually in the process of increasing theirs from 5 cents to 10 cents. Massachusetts is still 5 cents, but there's legislation being considered right now that would increase theirs from 5 cents to 10 cents as well. So hopefully... Pretty soon, you know, we'll have 10 cents across the region. As you know, it's always what juice you have up at the state house. Right. And so have you talked to any of the leadership? Have you talked to the governor about this? What have you heard? Um, we, we talked to the governor's staff a few weeks back just to educate them and inform them on how the whole system would work. Because as you noted, it's, it's kind of complicated. It requires a little bit of explanation. Um, In theory? And Do you think he's on board or not? Um, I don't know. I don't know whether the governor's on board. I think they seemed open to it. Um, I think they're open to the idea. I think what they want to see is that it's going to work, number one, and that number two, it's not going to be overly burdensome on retailers in the state. And I think this bill would check both of those boxes. Um, on the legislative side, uh, we're meeting with the speaker um, next week. You know, we, we'll, we'll see how that meeting goes. We've had a lot of conversations with a lot of legislators. There's a lot of support in both chambers. Um, I think support is building. And so we, you know, we're optimistic that this is the year that we can figure it out and finally you know, crack that nut here in Rhode Island and actually get a bottle bill done. People confuse sometimes that the governor's all over about the litter tax, right? right. So, they, okay. so these are two vastly separate things, probably else ultimately with the environment. But he, you, know, you sometimes worry, well, he's putting his focus so much into this. Does this year, is this something he wants to, you know, to bite off and try to chew the bottle bill? Yeah, well, I think what, you know, what was good was that the governor highlighted the litter problem in the state of the state address. Um, I think, you know, the message that the environmental community sent back to him was that, hey, that's great, but we got to do a lot more. Just doing more litter cleanups, volunteer cleanups. That's largely what we've been doing for the past 30, 40 years, and that's not really getting the job done here. The data is pretty clear on that. Um, so I think he's open to it. And again, I'm hopeful that the governor will support it as well.